There are many modern feats of engineering that have transformed America and the American people. In the 1920s, there was the Holland Tunnel that runs under the Hudson River in New York, the world's first mechanically ventilated tunnel. In the 1930s, the Hoover Dam in Nevada, President Roosevelt's vision to contain the Colorado River and to turn it into a water and power resource. And as recently as the 2000s in Louisiana, a risk reduction system to help ensure that tragedies like Hurricane Katrina have less likelihood of reoccurring. Much earlier, at least two other feats of engineering in the U.S. were built by immigrants from China. The first transcontinental railroad that opened in 1869, connecting the east and west coasts, and the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, that at the time in 1937 was the world's tallest and longest suspension bridge. In China, the Qinghai-Tibet Railway, so named because it stretches from Xining in Qinghai to Lhasa in Tibet, is both tall and long. In fact, at one point, it has the highest train line and train station in the world, and in total is 1,956 kilometers long. It also has 675 bridges, and in between, a series of tunnels that break records for highest and longest tunnels in the world. But probably its biggest human achievement is that it gave Tibet a railway of its own, thus becoming the last area to be connected by train in China, a country that until not so long ago was deep in poverty. Since the Qinghai Tibet Railway opened in 2006, Tibet has seen GDP growth of over 10% a year. Tourists are a huge source of that, almost 34 million visitors in 2018. Generating seven billion U.S. dollars a year and lifting thousands of people from poverty, farmers and herdsmen are transferring their skills to meet this new demand, earning more income in less physically challenging environments. The railway is unique on many levels. The trains are specially designed to function not only in elevated environments but also in a range of climates and natural terrains. Through the window, the landscape is stunning. But in Tibet, because it's at such high altitude, each cargo and passenger train comes with its own doctor, and each person is provided with an oxygen supply. Looking at the map, it's hard to believe that there was an idea to create such a railway, let alone the ability to bring it to reality. Dr. Sun Yat-sen, the father of modern China, was not just a revolutionary but also a prolific planner. In a Cambridge University paper, contemporary academics have studied the legacy of his railway plans drawn up in 1921 and criticized at the time as being naive and unrealistic. But many of his early ideas shaped and influenced the later development of China's railway, including his vision for a route that now travels between Qinghai and Tibet. So remote are many of the stops. That some stations like Gulu and Tuozhou are not staffed, and being so cut off from the rest of China and the rest of the world meant that for most of their history, the people living here were impoverished. Constructing just the Xining to Gulu section required five years, 2,000 medical staff, and 140,000 workers battling frozen soil, a fragile economy, and limited oxygen. It's easy to look at the Qinghai-Tibet Railway as this incredible transport network that almost defies belief, but the real human value is its ability to connect people, giving them mobility and offering them a better life than the one they had. In a way, it's not so dissimilar to the amazing bridges, tunnels, and reservoirs in the United States. These too gave the American people the possibility to improve oneself to the maximum. And the Qinghai-Tibet Railway is its own way of achieving that same idea of a world that is fairer, more just, and more inclusive. Thanks for watching. I'm James Chow. We've got lots more videos, so like, follow, and subscribe at the China Current.